For two years during active conflict, the Ethiopian government was accused of blocking humanitarian aid. But a new book by a UN insider tells a much different story. We'll speak with the author of At the Center of the World in Ethiopia. Hey everybody, it's Hermela Aragawi and you're watching Hermela TV. Today I'm really excited to do a book review with you. It's a new book called At the Center of the World in Ethiopia. It's written by the country director of the UN World Food Program in Ethiopia from 2018 till the end of 2021. Very important years, years that uh, mark a first nonviolent political transition, but also unfortunately years that cover the war that started in November 2020. So Stephen Ware Omamo is Kenyan, um, and here he gives us a first-hand account of what it was like to be on the ground trying to deliver humanitarian aid to often war-affected um, areas, and he talks about the difference between science-based decision-making and politically infested decision-making. And I would argue that he's incredibly generous to the World Food Program as an organization and the important uh, emergency relief work that they do, but also goes into some of the political um, appointees or the more politically uh, uh, driven uh, employees within the World Food Program that sometimes made it difficult to do the work and put the people first. So I'm going to go into just one chapter of the book so you have a reason to actually go get it. And then later this week, you'll hear from the author himself. So chapter two uh, is titled Between the Government and the, quote, International Community. And it opens with two quotes. One is from the World Food Program Regional Director for East Africa, who is based in Addis Ababa, and that person said to him, quote, there is an impression in senior management that you are too close to the government. This was said to him in April 2021. It was at a time where ENDF controlled Mekele, but TPLF was still uh, waging what he called effective guerrilla warfare across the region. The second quote that the chapter opens with is from a uh, TPLF bureau head in the Tigray region. And that person uh, said to him, you're not a person, you're just a robot sent here by Abiy Ahmed. That was said to him later in 2021 in November. And we'll talk about both of them and the context in which they were both said and what he extrapolated from those experiences. Uh, so let's start with what the World Food Program Bureau had said in April 2021. Again, this was about six months um, into the war. Uh, and Omamo, the author, says the agency was certain that large amounts of people in Tigray and parts of the Amhara and Afar regions needed humanitarian assistance. And there was a genuine fear of widespread food insecurity. He says it was a tough time uh, for the World Food Program. And he quotes, the ultimately false people are dying of hunger and Tigray narrative had begun to take hold and spread. So he was having to respond uh, to a lot of that. But he says the government was moving large volumes of food into the region, but due to insecurity and limited transport capacity, much of this food was still in warehouses in Mekele, the capital of the Tigray region. And this was the experience, he says, of other NGOs as well. So let's talk about the transport uh, issue. And again, this conversation is happening a little bit earlier in February 2021. Um, and so in, in uh, a tweet that was sent out by the World Food Program Executive Director David Beasley, who he says has a pretty good relationship with the Ethiopian Prime Minister of Abiy Ahmed, the, the uh, Executive Director tweeted, the food in these warehouses, he was in Mekele in front of these warehouses, is part of 20... 1,000 tons that World Food Program is transporting to support 1.3 million people, and it's now being prepped for distribution across Tigray. And we need uh, uh, all human. We need to address all humanitarian needs. Not a single person deserves to go to bed hungry. And then he sent a second tweet again in front of these warehouses in Mekele that were had so much food but couldn't get it to the regions that were necessary because of fighting and insecurity. So these two tweets actually, according to Omamo and uh, his narrative, helped that relationship between the government um, and the World Food Program, which was an important relationship so that the World Food Program could do the work that they needed to do, um, according to Omamo. And then the government can also 
uh, be supported in these relief efforts at a time where their capacity was strained. So soon uh, after the executive director went to Mekale, Omamo himself visited parts of Tigray. And he said uh, he visited the east, central, and northwest uh, Tigray. He says, along the way, we saw signs of recent battles and heartbreaking tales of hardship from the internally displaced by the war. And he says, huge convoys carrying government food could be seen waiting to uh, unload in towns like Adwa, Aksum, and Wukrom. So this reiterates the fact that it wasn't about the food not being in Tigray, but it was being held in different parts of Tigray because it was not safe enough for these NGOs to be able to move through. So he says, and this is where he talks about the conflict between certain people within World Food Program, usually the regional um, uh, folks in the regional office that weren't really on the ground and those in headquarters that were uh, in Rome, I believe the headquarters are. And he says, unfortunately, within the World Food Program, there was a mistaken belief and expectation that we could simply walk into Tigray and begin to deliver assistance, but that does not fly in Ethiopia, where the government is strong and in the driving seat. He says, like all agencies, World Food Program was pressing for more access to, to Tigray. Like all agencies, we were frustrated, but we couldn't dismiss the security concerns raised by the government. So in December 2020, he talks about a, a trip that he made to Gondor and talking to one of the social services people there. Um, and there he learned that there was a government assistance uh, mission that went into Tigray's western zone that was ambushed by the Tigray forces and six workers had been killed. So this is December 2020, about a, war, a month rather after the war started. So this insecurity uh, was the main factor, he says, that was getting in the way of aid for much of this war, as, as, as you would expect, even without um, knowing all the details. Uh, and so let's go back to this quote that was said to him that he was too close to the government. So he says, by what objective standards was I too close to the government? It was a part of my role uh, to have a relationship with the government, it actually made World Food Program more respected. Um, uh, and someone in uh, World Food Program says to him, you should be doing more, WFP should be doing more, even if it means that someone is declared persona non grata by the government, so be it. So this is a quote from the book. Well, sure enough, uh, later that year in September 2021, you guys probably remember the Ministry of Foreign Affairs announcing that a list of seven UN uh, staff uh, from the agencies were considered persona non grata, grata for what the government called meddling. Now, I looked at that list, I went back to look at it, and none of those people were from the World Food Program. So it, 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 it's likely that the way the World Food Program operated under Stephen Ware Omama, the country director, actually made the agency in a better place to do the work that they were there to do. Uh, so that's one angle of it. So let's talk about what was said to him by the TPLF uh, Tigray Bureau head. You're not a person, you're just a robot sent here by Abiy Ahmed. This was said in November 2021. So at this point, uh, there was a lot of conversation about the uh, humanitarian aid trucks that had gone into Tigray and had not come back, um, and a question of whether there was a fuel shortage that was keeping those trucks from returning. This is, uh, you know, I think one of the most poignant part of the book, although there's many interesting parts that go even uh, beyond the conflict um, in, in northern Ethiopia, but just more about the way the, the agencies work and how they do or don't work with the government. So in September 2021, um, there was a series of tweets, and I've you know, come to learn that some of them, Stephen Ware Omama was behind, and some really important tweets um, I know for many of us who are trying to really understand was there a blockade? Was the government actually intentionally uh, blocking humanitarian aid into getting into parts of um, uh, Tigray? And so in September 2021, Stephen Ware Omamo, at least he you know, supervised this message uh, through a, a UN Ethiopia tweet said, concerning none of the 149 trucks in the convoy that reached Makale, Ethiopia last week returned, only 38 out of 466 trucks that entered Tigray since July 12th had returned. We need trucks to deliver life-saving assistance to the people in Tigray. And there were several other tweets along those lines. So that you're a robot um, 
comment from the TPLF Tigray Bureau head. Uh, he said, we're provoked by his series of questions about the humanitarian aid trucks and the fuel. Uh, so, and he describes this conversation with this figure, um, this TPLF figure in Tigray, and he said, he himself said there was available feud in, fuel rather, in Tigray that stood at millions of liters, but, and this is quoting that um, person, but the TPLF's position is there were more important strategic priorities for the fuel than humanitarian assistance. And then Stephen Weromamo says, this was war, brutal. Later, he says, I shared the news of TPLF's position on fuel with the World Food Program leadership, and this, he was surprised uh, or startled that to see that the preference was still to continue to press the Ethiopian government to allow fuel tankers that were in Samarat, the capital of the Afar region, to go to Mekele. And he responded saying, this is not helpful for the work that we're trying to do. It makes more sense to press the TPLF to release some of the fuel uh, that was in the Tigray region. Um, and following that, the executive director of World Food Program, David Beasley, shared a tweet that was he said it was just confused the situation. It made it look like he was posturing along other UN officials who wanted to take this route of pressing the government as opposed to pressing the uh, the, the TPLF um, in 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 the Tigray region. Um, and so he goes back to the conversation with this uh, Tigray bureau head, and he says to him, he says to Omamo, how dare you speak to me like that about the trucks and the fuel while the sons and daughters of Tigray were shedding blood for freedom. And Omamo says he stood firm and said, we needed trucks for operation. Trucks were not coming out of Tigray, and we need the fuel for vulnerable and insecure people. And the response from the TPLF bureau head was, we have other priorities, ask the Abi government for fuel. So it is quite the book. Uh, it's a first-hand account. Stephen Omamo, Were Omamo, uh, says this was not about you know, the World Food Program as a whole. This isn't about Ethiopia as a country. This was my personal experience. Um, and telling it, you know, the way that I saw it and what happened on the ground and to really push back against the very simplistic narratives that had uh, that were circulating globally about and he, he uses these words the you know uh, bad guy government on one side versus good guy TPLF on the other side he said it was just much more complicated than that although it became very clear to anyone who wanted to listen so it's a refreshing first-person account that sets some of the story straight. I have told uh, Wary Omamo this, but uh, I think this is going to be one for the record because of the, you, you, can't, you can't push back against a lot of these uh, stances. It was from one perspective, but so much of it is corroborated and cross-referenced and appears to be true. And he doesn't really talk about things that he doesn't really understand or know that much about, even if it would be you know, politically um, to his favor from one side or the other. So it's quite balanced um, and, and, and just really the type of storytelling that we need from those on the ground, particularly those with African uh, origins that were a part of such important moments in history that will, this I believe will help depolarize some people who genuinely want to know what happened. Uh, during this war and what role the agencies played and what role the government and the TPLF and the Tigray region uh, played. So we will hear from the author Stephen Were Omamo later this week. The interview will be released to our Patreon members first and then later released to the public. So if you're not a member of our Patreon already, you can go to patreon.com slash Hermela TV and become a member now. You can choose whatever amount you want to sign up um, under, but something regular is support us monthly at $5, whatever you can do. Uh, it is helping us do what we want to do, which is independent journalism um, that is not influenced by any you know, large donors or actors. So at the center of the world in Ethiopia, it's out right now on Amazon. You can get the hard copy or the Kindle version. Again, we'll hear from the author later this week. If you have any other questions about the book or want uh, to discuss any other parts of it, if you've read it, let me know in the comments and we'll try to address that in another uh, segment. Thank you so much for watching. 
For two years during active conflict, the Ethiopian government was accused of blocking humanitarian aid. But a new book by a UN insider tells a much different story. We'll speak with the author of At the Center of the World in Ethiopia.